Hello everyone and welcome back to Disco Elysium. This is episode 7 where the art cop is still inherently present and with us today where we are going to proceed with day 2. It's almost 3 p.m. We're over the halfway point of the day and we're going to have a look at our journal and see what we have to do. We've been doing a we've been doing a lot. Uh, we explored the uh, the cursed section of the bookshelf. The bookshelf, the bookstore, uh, and that was fun. Um, and then we had we we got a bunch, we got a bunch. We actually finally, we finally inspected the body. We finally inspected the body without throwing up. And I'm very proud of myself. Uh, and today we are going to go and um, I think probably one of the the things I want to do is I think. If I recall correctly, uh, I do need to continue to check out the abandoned commercial district, I think. Um, oh no, hang on. There's the thing with the ice cream and I need the super... I do need the super pry bar. Oh, uh, there's a room down here. It might help if, uh, it might help if you uh, explore thoroughly. There's a cellar window and people's feet are shuffling by on the street. Because um, there is the, the whole situation uh, that Placence told us about uh, with a malignant entity living inside um, a chimney. Oh, it's this. You know what? You know what? I can't believe I didn't even investigate this on our, uh, our way in last time. I saw it, I made a mental note to inspect it, and then I got distracted by ice cream. I mean, who's not going to get distracted by ice cream? Might have had something to do with the beer. Um, let's inspect the chimney. A thick layer of cold dust covers the furnace, coloring it pitch black. There you go. Big chimney. Imagine missing this. Imagine that. Art cop for shame looks like this furnace has a face and it's a face of agony this furnace has a face of agony kim what is this thing is this a furnace looks like it looks like an old central furnace used to heat the building it's connected to the chimney he opens the door and gingerly peeks inside no one has used it in ages no signs of any recent fire only dead rats no malignant entities look inside the furnace it's dark and grimy here. In the darkness you can hear chatter. It's coming from above. A voice or several voices talking to each other. Near the smoke chamber, upstairs. Okay, well that's gonna... That makes sense that there's a malignant entity in the form of voices above. The echo is so prominent. It's impossible to discern what the voices are saying or what's producing them. Okay. What are you doing? The lieutenant asks when he sees you climb halfway inside the furnace. I'm hallucinating. Or maybe it's the entity. Wait, really? Take your head out of the chimney, please. It's not safe. Okay. Yell hello into the furnace. Oh, my whistle's wet. That's good. We do love a wet whistle. Uh, physical instrument. Okay. Smear your hands with coal. I don't know why that would be a good idea. Uh, those voices I heard. Maybe it's the malignant entity? Pleasant said it lives in a chimney. You're right. The rooms do look like they're connected. But malignant entities don't exist. At least not the supernatural kind. Okay. Um, look, last time I kicked a metal object, it did not go well. So I'm, I'm, I'm going to do that. Sorry, mailbox. Um, I am going to... I believe I should have some clothing... For physical instrument, that's right. Put on the thing. Physical instrument plus one. Alright, good to me. Put on the white tank top. Now, what's our percentage? A thick layer of coal dust covers the furnace, coloring it pitch black. 72%! Could muster all your strength and yell. Dude, I, I swear to God, I have the worst luck on higher rolls. Like, I probably have better chance of getting a success 
on lower rolls. Does that make sense? No, it does not. Like, I, if I didn't equip the top and I just went for it, I would have got it, you know? 100%. 100% chance to succeed at the 58% chance. Like, like 58% of the time works 100% of the time. Uh, <coughs> Your throat can produce little more than a dry croak. Awkward, since you already had a drink. Okay. A lifetime of smoking and drinking will do that to you. Okay. The chatter from the chimney. I'm about, I'm about to lose morale. You seem to have made no impression on whatever's up there. Hell yeah. Then again, maybe it's worth actually trying something up there. Maybe. Hmm. Maybe you should let your voice rest, officer. Try again later. Now, I have, a, I have a, a question. Put skill points into physical instrument to open this white check, right? It's currently at three. What if, can we trick the game by potentially taking this off Checking it, layer it's locked because it's at two. Then opening inventory, putting it back on to increase my physical instrument. A thick layer of cold dust. All right, it does not work. The game remembers what skill level you were when you tried it. We do have skill points though. We do have skill points. Am I, am I this stubborn? Am I? Am I this stubborn? Physical instrument would go up to a four. Flex powerful muscles, enjoy healthy organs. I feel like that might just, you know. Your ability to use them effectively. I can do push ups and sit ups and knockout punches. Is physical instrument related to also picking up the weights in that room? Because if so, might be a might be a good idea. You know what? Gimme one second. Gimme give gimme give one second. Okay. One second has passed. Give me one second. Okay. Increase physical instrument points. Level it up. A thick layer of cold dust covers the furnace, coloring it pitch black. Hello! Something breaks loose in you. A mighty bellow echoes throughout the chimney's depths. The chatter of tiny voices above suddenly cease. Then... Ah. Hello? <laughs> Hell yeah. Also remember... Drink responsibly. You've awakened the entity. We've done it, dude. I summon the ghost of this doomed commercial area. Answer me, spirit! Hello? Did you say anything? I can't hear you. Please come upstairs. There is a safety curtain on the second floor. I'll open it. Safety curtain. You hear a low rumble upstairs. The sound of a curtain being pulled aside. Good. And also, like, for context, because you saw that... I'm going to explain this before anyone is concerned, okay? Uh, real talk... Um, I last played Disco Elysium, I recorded last episode like three days ago, okay? Um, and I drank a beer in that episode. I haven't had a beer since then, and now I'm having a beer in the next one three days later. One beer every few days, healthy stuff. So, just gonna confirm with you, I do not drink every day, at all. So don't worry about me. It's, it's funny, and also I enjoy beer, so it's a good excuse. And it's also 11.30 at night, so... If I was recording this at 10 in the morning, we wouldn't be this reckless, okay? We wouldn't be screaming into a chimney for the malignant entity. But, you know, would we be better off if I was recording this at 10 a.m.? Nowhere to find out, you know? Disco Elysium is a different game, depending on your mood. So, curtains have been pulled aside. Let's go. After you, officer. Okay. Let's kick it with our foot now. <laughs> Do we smear our hands with coal? I'd rather not. We are wearing gloves, though. I'm going to leave. I want to leave. There's no reason to dirty our paws, you know? Upstairs, Kim. 
I forget. We have to click on stairs. Not run up them. Not run up them. You know what? I forget that. I also have a torch. Okay. What is over there? Oh shit! I for oh shit! Shoes in a puddle of melting snow. There's more! The floorboards creak. Does someone live here? Oh man. This wasn't behind. This wasn't the safety curtain, was it? This is. Was. Oh, I just. Did I miss the door? I think I missed that door. Damn. Okay, so. Looks like someone tried to reconceptualize their business here. Oh man, revisiting a room has a new thought for conceptualization. That's deep. I don't get it. Look, the skis and rotor blades both bear the same Slipstream logo. It seems likely that they started out making one, failed to turn them, and then pivoted to producing the other. So, yeah, I think so, because we, when we used that coal thing, we called a business, but it was a different business, right? But the question is, which did they start with, and which did they pivot to? That's a good question. What a strange leap of imagination, and yet they still failed. How sad. Reality is ruthless. Hell yeah it is, brother. Conceptualize that. Okay, so I think... Unless this is where the curtain was, I ain't seeing a curtain. I think I just completely missed this doorway when we were last here. This is good that I didn't finish exploring this properly. Because now, I've got postcards. You know, and it's all worth it for postcard La Delta 51. Fit keep in mind, by the way, that's a postcard from the year 51, which we're currently in. So that confirms that someone f does hang out here. The sunlight has made this postcard almost completely sepia-toned. Midtown traffic passes. Overhead, the ghosts of skyscrapers disappear into a beige midday mist, vaporizing from the delta on which the district was built. The postcard is prepaid. We're in the year 51 currently, aren't we? I'm pretty sure we are. Interestingly enough, the sun has destroyed it. Um, so there you go. Ah, oh, no, okay, that's definitely, the, that's the chimney, okay. Maybe this was the safety curtain right here. So actually it was probably a really good point for us to not even come up here. Because I think that's the thing that got lifted up. So we would have come here before and that would have been sealed. So we might have missed an opportunity to just go up and knock on the door. I like the way that we've done it, with reckless shouting into an, a, an echo chamber, you know? It's a good metaphor. This tray is full of dice, colourful polyhedral dice, hundreds of them. Well, someone does live here, it's, it's you. He's got a studio up here, this looks nice. The candy dispenser has been repurposed to contain thousands of dice. What do you do with your dice up here? This is actually such a nice little spot. I would love to have like a spot like this. I would just chill and like do work. That would be awesome. Hello. Hello. I'm Nia. Shining a flashlight in your face. Nia. A bird-like woman. You like birds, Nia? A throne of tools with emerald light shining through her hair. Did you try knocking on my window? I must have missed you. I've been listening to my Melius. Uh, no, I was the one just shouting at you from the, uh, from the chimney. So what kind of die are you looking for? Could this be the malicious entity? Perhaps it's wise to go along with this masquerade for now. Yes. She's got a direct view to the backyard. You should interrogate her about the lynching. Oh, she does too. Hold on. <laughs> what do you mean my Milius? Yes, Amelia is like a call-in station. You need a two-way radio to access one. That's why I have these. Mostly, they just teach you to swear in different languages. But some of the stations can be quite interesting. I was so absorbed, I must have missed you knocking. Okay, you must have me confused with someone else. I haven't, I haven't knocked on your window. Then how did you get inside? 
by the south entrance? You know what? It doesn't even matter. What matters is that you're finally here. Let's talk dice. Did you have something specific in mind? Is this the person that we were yelling to? This gap insinuates yes, but they're not... They are not acknowledging the fact that I yelled at them from below. Why are you asking me about dice, novelty dice maker? I'm a novelty dice maker. Oh. Tell me the name of your role-playing system and I'll make the die you need. That's why you're here, yes? Yes. Playing a game called Dancing Paradise. And I think my dice are faulty because they fail at high percentages. As she speaks, her bone-like fingers fiddle with her ring. Her bones light, but her hands strong. Mm -mm. <sighs> Role-playing games? You know the one made by Fortress Accident. Does that count? <laughs> okay. Um... Sure, I like role-playing games and I need some dice. Very good. My rate is 10 real per set. Unless you want something really unusual. <sighs> oh, do I want really unusual dice? Can I just roll them in the game every time I make a decision? Take a look around and see if there's any particular stone you want to use. The walls around her are covered with rows of precious stones and minerals. It almost looks as if the stones and dice are a natural part of the room, growing out of the shells like stalagmites. Nice. No falsehoods are present. She's a novelty dice maker and doesn't have anything to hide. Ask what you need. How did you become a dice maker? How did I become one? It was a business decision. I was a regular jeweler at first, but that's an unfocused field with too much competition. Mm. Some of my friends were role players. They asked me to make some polyhedral dice out of cobalt. That was my first order. I grew it from there. Okay. Do you like role playing games yourself? Not especially. I like working with rare materials and a steady pay. And role players as customers? They're nice people. What do you know about the man who was lynched behind the whirling in rags? Care to roll some dice on that one? Um, let me go with... I'd like to order a die from you. Of course. Tell me what you have in mind. <laughs> oh, do you know the we're all untethered setting? I want to die for that. Oh man, are we going to be able to buy that board game and actually not only play it, but also get custom dice for the game a game within a game dude i need to get some money so i can buy that board game hmm curse dice most extraordinary die i don't know what die i want very regular something to help with my work damn these three options are quite appealing. I'm going to say tell me about this because this doesn't mean I'm going to ask for that. Tell me about your most extraordinary die. A star that fell from the firmament? Those cost more than seven real. Are you sure? A star that fell from the firmament cost more than seven real. Oh man. Does this just back me out to previous questions? This is because I kind of, I'm a star myself, a superstar. Superstars don't care about money. I would like to buy those, but hold on. All right, maybe some other die then. Do you have any cursed dice? What do you mean by cursed? As cursed? <laughs> Abracadabra, perished like this world. Uh, as cursed as this commercial area. All right, how about I surprise you? Come back in eight hours with seven real and I'll give you your cursed die. Maybe you have um, some other ideas for dice? Do you know the Wural Untethered setting? I want to die for that. Ah, yes. Fortress accident. It's too bad they never finished their game. The Wiro Untethered die is a variation of a standard role-playing die. Only, instead of plants, it uses motives of ice and death. And loss, of course. 
Ice, death, loss. Sounds like you. Chief. I'm thinking something made from alligator jaw bone, cast in black resin. The reptile bone is as white as ice and dead as, well, death. For seven real, I could have it ready in eight hours. That actually sounds fucking awesome. Um, what's a standard role-playing die? It's a Nicosita trahedron, a 24-sided die that can produce results for 2-sided, 3-sided, 4-sided, 6-sided, and 12-sided die with a single roll. Technically, you can also use it for many other sizes, but you may need to re-roll results. Hmm. Loving it. So nifty. Why do you need to cast it in resin? Untreated bone is porous and prone to chipping. Cast it in something hard like resin though, and voila, it's perfect. Damn, I want this one, but I want to check the other options. Maybe you have some other ideas for dice? Looking for something to help with my work. I think I have just the right one for you. She opens the top drawer of her work desk and takes something out. Two polyhedrons, red and blue, are cradled in her palm. Do you take the red dye? Or do you take the blue dye? Take the red one and you solve this case immediately. Take the blue one and you just get yourself drunk at the whirling and rags. Every day. I don't get it. You're a police officer, right? Uh, Here, <laughs> catch. They're a gift from me. Oh, she just gave me free dice and a red and blue, cause police. A beautiful woman tossing you a gift. Whatever you do, don't overthink it. Oh, no. I don't have my hand-eye coordination. No. Okay. We are totally overthinking this. All right, my hands are open. My palms are as open as the gates of heaven when I arrive. Your hands can't agree what to do and the two dice drop to the floor and scatter in opposite directions, like pearls from a broken string. The blue one disappears down the pit in the center of the room. No, that's fine. I'll go downstairs and I'll get it. What did I, what was my ro <laughs> I hate when you look at your role and you go, you really, you really just, I had a minus one modifier. I would have succeeded. I had a minus one modifier. Ah, down the drain, like your career. <laughs> I apologize, officer. That comment was unnecessary. No, pick up the red die. That one is made of bloodstone with a lapis lazuli inlay. The other one was the inverse. There were a set, you see, but now the set is broken. No, that's right. It's gone down the. It's, it's gone down the thing. I, I was yelling at you from down there, so uh, don't worry about it. Let me just adjust my real, authentic hair. It's a shame. They might have brought you luck. <laughs> they might have brought me luck. Good, good joke. Is she pitying you? Yeah. Good God, she's pitying you. She, she is, she is pitying me. That is, that is true. Now, was there anything else? Um. Yes. Of course. Tell me what you have in mind. Now, I would like to buy this die. Ah, yes, the Wiro. Ice. I'm thinking something made from alligator jawbone. Yes. Great. See you in eight hours then. Was there anything else? Did alligator jawbone and and resin sounds like uh, an absolute an absolute treat. I'm I'm keen for that. Uh, what do you know about the man who is lynched behind the whirling and rags? Now that business has concluded. Nothing really. I didn't know him. Yeah, I know, but, you know. Who cares about the dead body? We might be dealing with a malignant entity here. Naughty dice maker. The lieutenant looks at his notebook. Then, the woman under the large window. Your window looks directly onto the courtyard. You're saying you didn't see or hear anything unusual last Sunday evening? I'm sorry, detective, but as you know, 
I usually have my headphones on when I'm working. It shuts out most of the daily ruckus behind my window. What do you mean by the daily ruckus? Well, there's always something going on in the whirling's backyard. Like Kuno and hangings. During daytime, there are usually those kids. And lately, I've been seeing a lot of drunk workers hanging about. Must be because of the strike. Okay. She's heard of the murder, but did not see it, sire. Thank you, drama. But I never saw anyone during that fateful Sunday night, I'm afraid. And you never took your eyes off work to look out the window? I might have, but in this case, all I would have seen is my own reflection staring back from the darkness. That is true. It's really hard to make anything out in the yard when it's dark outside. Besides, I rarely get up to look out the window when I'm in the zone. Do you often work Sunday nights? It's an odd profession, making dice for people. But I like it, and I prefer doing this to sitting at home. I see. Thank you for your answers. She nods. Anything else, officer? Where are we anyway? What is this place? We're inside the chimney of an old central furnace. It's strange, I know. She looks at the ruddy bricks that make up the walls. Even though they've been repainted, there are still signs of coal black soot here and there. But when I arrived here, all the other rooms were taken, so I had to build myself a makeshift home. Besides, I don't really have to pay any rent here, so that's a plus. That's solid. Plaisance was right. There's an entity living in the chimney. You should ask her about the curse. Done. Create here. Uh, I've heard this place is cursed. Did you know that people call it the doomed commercial area? I've heard the stories, but I don't think those stories are true. How do you explain what happened to all those companies then? It's just capitalism. We only hear about tales of success, so it's often surprising to realize how many ventures actually fail. That is true. You know what's... I'll tell you this. This is a thought that I actually have quite a lot when I am navigating the city. When I leave the house on the very rare occasion that I that I do, is I, I always like... When I'm going through just normal suburbia and I'm just checking out places and I'm heading to somewhere, I always like look out like a tram window or something and you see these just random businesses and places that are just kind of in the middle of nowhere or in quiet places are just kind of there and I always think about that I'm like I wonder how many people I wonder how many people are going there to that spot specifically for that place because you know when you have a business it is also about location and I always just think huh that kind of shop in this kind of place and it's open so I guess there's enough people to keep it afloat. Like, who would have thought that a, a random little shop that makes a really niche, obscure thing is not only open, but there. But, you know, it's just a question that I have. Sometimes it pops into my head when I'm just like, why are shops here and not somewhere else? But I guess it works out for them. Placence is the one who sent me. She's convinced that the place is swarming with malicious energies. Placence, the bookshop lady? Yeah. I've heard that her business is doing rather well. Have the energies spared her somehow? Um, let's have a look. <laughs> that second option. Actually, the bookstore isn't doing that well. There are hardly any customers and she has to exploit her own daughter to keep the company going. Oh, right. But it's not just the bookstore that's still up and running. What about the whirling in racks? Some people say it's part of the building complex. <laughs> and customers have trouble paying bills. Uh, hold on, the whirling is part of the doomed commercial area? You could say so. Both houses were built at the same time and under the east of the Commerce Centre project. Yeah, but it's a still a separate building. The malicious energies can't reach there. And then there is me. <sighs> she sighs, looking at her messy work table. All kinds of tools lie there scattered from knives to carving files to wire cutters. I've been here for 14 years, selling novelty dice to role-playing enthusiasts. Not exactly a million rail business idea, yet somehow I've survived despite the talk of malicious energies. Strange, isn't it? Almost as if it's not even real. 14 years. 
Not bad. Maybe it's just because she's so talented that she's been able to woo the curse. I'll be the first to admit there are many inconsistencies in this so-called curse. Um, it's because you're competent and dedicated to your craft. The curse doesn't affect people like you. <laughs> what, so the curse only affects people with poor work ethics? What you're describing isn't a curse. It's capitalism. I know. Time has come to face the source. Fear not, for the forces of the universe are supporting you in this psychic quest. <laughs> I'm starting to see that there is no curse. Only business decisions and natural market fluctuations. Exactly. Truth is always so disappointingly mundane and boring. <laughs> is that how we're going to find out that essentially the truth of this murder is just... It's a lynching and some dock workers did it. But it's got to... It's sexy and mysterious. But I'm glad we got this sorted out. Anything else I can help you with today? That's all she has to say on the subject. She's been thorough and truthful, as far as we can see. Shivers. 8% with no pluses. 8%. Why hasn't her business failed? Because she's great. Do you know what happened to other tenants? Everyone else is gone. More or less. Are you interested in anyone specific? Oh, quite a lot of them spring to mind. Oh, nice. There's so much. That's actually awesome. Um, there used to be a hair salon here, right? Yes, I think it was called Androgynous Orlando or something similar. They weren't a big hit around here. Turns out that working class men don't like genderless haircuts. They're scared of that word. <laughs> Oh no, something that isn't manly. You wouldn't like it either. The others would laugh at you. A bit of experimenting every now and then isn't bad. What's wrong with a bit of experimenting? The customers should have been more open-minded. I guess it just wasn't the time yet. She tucks a strand of hair under the headscarf. This is the second note that's about that's drawing attention to the headscarf. What happened to the gym? It wasn't merely a gym, it was Artemiteps Boxing Club, a community project created to steer at-risk youth away from drugs and crime. Okay, and who was Art- um... Oh god, it was it literally just said to me, I'm so bad at, at, at this. <laughs> and who was Artemitep? A kind man, from Zemsk. From Zemsk. He had some trouble with the law when he was younger. And that's why he wanted to start the gym, as his way of giving back. That's cute. Eh, maybe that's what Kuno needs, a community-centric boxing club. Hmm, Kuno. Who's Kuno? Um, he's a little ginger gremlin who likes to defile dead bodies. Oh yes, you mean the kid with the sailor's mouth. Yes, I've heard him yelling profanities in the backyard. <laughs> Totally quiet there at the moment. I think it would take more than a gym to help that kid. Um, how did that community project work out? It didn't. If anything, it made the youth situation in Martinez even worse. At some point, someone started a rumor that the punching bag downstairs was full of amphetamines. No, oh. it's not really full of that. No one would store their drugs like that. Not in a punching bag. Eventually, the coalition took away the funding and the club went bankrupt. This was a few years ago. It's gotten much more peaceful around the plaza ever since. What's up with the broken windows? Oh, this one's a mess. <sighs> there used to be a company that promised to repair windows 24 hours a day. <laughs> what could go wrong with this one, right? They were only available three hours of a day. Turns out... The business was actually set up as a front for an illicit group that was producing snuff medias. Who would have guessed? Mmm, snuff. Hmm. What's the snuff milia? You don't know Encyclopedia? I know more than the Encyclopedia. And they never cleaned up the debris either. Now it's just littering the hallway and I have no idea how to get rid of it on my own. Cool, very very cool about the debris, but what's a snuff milia? It's a sub-Rosa radio station that broadcasts real murders with real victims. 
Some people pay good money to get off on it. Nothing changes in her tone as she says that, as if it's just another piece of information to lay out for the world. Don't worry, the ICP has a separate division that deals exclusively with unlicensed subroses. This isn't our problem. Okay, let's make it our problem, as my brain always tries to tell me. Good luck with that. It's not easy catching those perpetrators. Did someone here make stuffed animals? I saw mounts lying around. You mean Mr. Fabron, the taxidermist? No, he mostly just did drugs. <laughs> Anything else? I found creepy mannequins. There used to be a fashion atelier here, but I have forgotten the head designer's name. They were doing well for a couple of years, until the insect rights activists came. Insect rights activists? Who's who's active who's who's activating the pray, praying mantises? Praying manti? Mm-hmm. The atelier produced a certain collection that used chitin among the materials. Apparently chitin is made in the occident, where it's extracted from beetle wings. Okay. And you know how all kinds of political movements are big in the occident. The activists shut down the biggest chitin supplier, which of course caused the price to skyrocket. Yes. And, naturally, all the most fashionable tastemakers refused to be seen in chitin from then on. The atelier went bankrupt before they could finish the collection. Mm. But insects don't have any brains or feelings. Insects are the worst thing on this earth. If you love bugs, you do you. Leave me out of it. Actually, insects do have brains. Nah. Yes, I understand what you're saying. I think the protesters took it a little too far. You know what I will say about insects? I am convinced. I am 100% convinced that moths, right? Okay, moths. When you see a moth, they are flying around so erratically that you're just like, what are they doing? Where are they going? They have no idea. They don't know where they're going, wherever the light takes them. And they're just flying around aimlessly. However, it is my theory I'm 100% convinced. Moths know where they're going at all times. Because you ever have those situations where... If you don't like a moth, then maybe you're trying to get rid of it. Or you're just around one. And the moth just specifically targets you. Like it flies right to you. Or it, in your general vicinity. Like, or, like moths... They know what they're doing. They fuck with you. They're like, oh, I'm a, I'm a bumbling insect and I have no idea where I'm going. They know where they're going. And they're going right into your face and they're going right into your personal space and they're trying to fuck with your life. And they, they know for their pitiful short existence on this earth, they exist to fuck with you. Convinced. Don't even get me started on pantry moths. I used to live in a house uh, and my housemates did not care that we had a pantry moth infestation and I was the only one battling it for months. I moved out. Because I, I was going crazy. I moved out. Because I was killing pantry moths. I had pantry moth traps set up that would overflow. I was smacking them in the palms of my hands at night. To the point where I thought I was going to go insane. I moved out. I don't like insects. I really don't like moths. And they are out to get me. Um, so vote for moth eradication. Because... Uh, I don't think there's got anything good going on. Butterflies, love them. Butterflies, great. Gentle, beautiful things. I will literally let a butterfly sit on my hand. Beautiful, ethereal creatures. Moths, squish them without even a second thought. Okay? Squish their brains that they have. As she shifts around, you notice several dead flies on the windowsill in front of her. Legs up. They're not me. Uh, flies, huh? Also flies. Mm, do not like flies, man. Especially the ones that you kill them and it turns out it's a pregnant fly and it just ejaculates maggots everywhere and you have to clean up that mess. Don't like flies either. Anything else? Um, let's Moving on, because... Uh, We'll, we'll get. We'll move on from the insects. What's uh, what's with the rotor blades and skis? They were made by a company called Slipstream. Ah. After they pivoted from making rotor blades to skis, 
their chief executive took off on a vacation with all their money. She rests her chin on her hand with an impish smile. Do you reckon that they t just ended up trying to turn those rotor blades into the skis? Honestly, I think it's quite funny. I think he's still sending out holiday transmissions from Tulula or Tiumotiri or Hashkor or wherever he is. Like when we called Slipstream and it did a, like what seemed like a, a message that was um, almost pre-recorded. We had a conversation with it, right? What do these transmissions say? The usual, I imagine. That he's been thinking up all kinds of new business plans and can't wait to get started on them just as soon as he returns. Her smile widens before she sees the lieutenant's face behind you. Interesting. Men like that are a curse. The lieutenant is stern. Sure, but Slipstream is history now. All their remaining assets got seized by the bailiffs in 47. Nice. I have no idea why those skis and blades are still lying around in the house. Not much use now, I guess. They were just the props. Why return them? Maybe you could make a sword out of one. No, wait, forget it. It would take too long. I found a strange machine. Fortress Accident, the radio game studio. She closes her eyes as some remnant of a memory lights up her face. They were an interesting bunch. We talked about role-playing systems every now and then. Once, I even saw two of them get into fisticuffs over Wiro. <laughs> they certainly took their work very seriously, even if they seem to be chronically liberal with their schedules. What do you mean, liberal? What happened? The usual. They ran out of money and couldn't get the project done on time. What went wrong? Well, I did hear them talking at times. She looks at the hallways if she can still hear them chit-chat behind her curtains on a cigarette break. They seem to believe they were historical individuals on some grand quest. <laughs> she sounds almost mocking when she says that. From what I've seen so far, the project did look quite impressive. Yes, but when the money started to run out, they just began to complain a lot about capitalism. You know, how the markets are rigged to keep out new businesses and so on. Mm -hmm. In the end, they just didn't get it done. They didn't have enough willpower to produce something truly historic and to show up to work on time. Mm. Well, showing up to work on time is incredibly hard. That's too bad. I would have supported them. The project looked great. Not the wisest decision. You would have lost all your savings. Mm, that's true. She tosses a pair of dice on the table. One of them stops near the edge of the metallic desk. What was the roll? The result is one on a 20-sided die. Damn, worse luck than me. I like that the game actually gave us the answer. I was like, what's the roll? The dice is black and filled with little silvery flakes like snowfall. Ice and death. Anything else? Uh, there was a terrifying taxidermied bear in the cellar. Oh boy, the fabled Revo Show ICT. You're in for a treat here. She smiles and leans closer, hands on her knees, like a stand-up comedian ready to tell a story. The place was owned by two guys who had some rather innovative ideas about marketing. The bear was one of them. Now ask me about their other ideas. What about their other ideas? Indeed, what were the other ideas? Alright, what about the other ideas? There was really just one. And it involved picking out the prettiest girls in the neighborhood and paying them 20 cents per hour to man the booth. And by man the booth, I mean slump behind the counter with a face that could maim you if you ever dared to disturb their bored magazine browsing. So the Frit girl. Frit does the same thing. <laughs> oh man, I love this game, dude. This game's brain is like my brain with a bit tied up to tie, turned up to 11 right i don't have this guy's brain i think the writing is very much like it's just really funny i think things and the game also then tells it to me you know like when it just gives you these pop-ups and i think that's great obviously this one this one's a given this isn't the example that i'm going for because this one's kind of obvious because it talks about 
bored girl doing magazine browsing. The first thing that anyone's going to think of should be the Frick girl. But there's multiple other uh, examples throughout this playthrough so far where I have a question about something or I'm thinking about something and I word it out loud and then I my brain chimes in with that exact thing. And I just think that's great. I love this game. I know a girl just like that. She works in Frit as a cashier and she's not particularly friendly. Employing silky teenage girls is a widespread practice, yes. Unfortunately, they always come in packs. I'm talking about acne-ridden girlfriends and gorilla-like boyfriends loitering near the shop. At least that's what happened with Ravishow ICT. Gorilla-like boyfriends. And they already had the bear. She closes her eyes as if remembering something painful. What about the bear? The bear. <laughs> she repeats, pressing thumbs into her temples, like trying to suppress a headache. It didn't work out. Of course not. The bear was terrifying. No one wants ice cream guarded by a hostile apex predator. To make matters worse, the fridge didn't work too well either, and half the ice cream came out malformed and partially melted. Perfect. Eventually, Ravishow Ice City lost the price war to its rival, Glass A 5000. Glass A 5000 saw caramel sundaes for only 5 cents a piece out of regular fridges. Caramel sundaes for 5 cents? 5 cents? Dude. No wonder. No wonder. Is the market doing its job? Mm, maybe. Because the taxidermist who made the bear definitely wasn't. Doing his job, I mean. How come? He said that the bear was his vision beast. He said he met his vision beast while high on desiccants. Called it Megatherian. This novelty dice maker just has some great, great tales. I love it. Megatherian. Sounds cool. Sounds cool, baby. I love my fucking art degree, dude. The fact that I just, my conceptualization just pops in and goes, you know what? Great. Here, have a cookie. Have 10 experience just because you're cool. I love it. We love being an art cop, dude. Uh, Megatherian? Megatherian. A mega wild beast. What's a mega wild beast? It's an imaginary beast that guides you through life. Nice. By telling you to do more drugs, mostly. Our spirit animals. The horrific necktie tightens around your neck. Strangely excited. Oh. But it doesn't feel particularly fun this time around. I uh, need speed. Do you think that Vision Beast could guide me towards some amphetamines? I don't, officer. You should stay away from drugs and Vision Beast. Okay. Anyway, now you know the story of the fallen ice cream empire. That is true, I do. She seems almost sad finishing the story. Some dust beams swirl in the afternoon air. Her eyes follow it idly. You know what's something I really appreciate uh, is how much this game... This game is a very visual experience, but the fact that the writing does not slack whatsoever at still painting you a visual and it paints you the world like a book and it's really really good because you look at this scene it's already beautiful it's nice and then the extra little icing on top is it's like you know dust beams swirl in the afternoon air and her eyes follow it idly it's such a realistic thing it's such a nice little detail shit like that is really good like it they don't have to do that but they do and that's why this game is great. Little sparkling embers under the window. Thank you, Perception. See, I must, I appreciate it, and so does my Perception. Anything else? Another failed business, perhaps? <laughs> I've been here for a long time. I found the building's intercom, but it's not working. Oh, right. I hope you didn't try to ring me. <laughs> her scarf has left a faint line on her dusty skin. We're getting a lot of, like, a lot of stuff drawing attention to her appearance and her scarf. I think none of those doorbells work, including mine. I'm still in the middle of connecting the wires. Sorry about the confusion. 14 years. How are you getting your sales? It must, it's a word of mouth thing for sure. 
The doorbell with the empty name card must belong to her then. Ah, uh, makes sense. Uh, so you're telling me that the doorbell with the empty name card was yours? That's right. I haven't even written my name there. As I said, it's quite useless right now. It doesn't work yet. 14 years. I was wondering about the Whirlingan rags. Is it part of the same building complex? You could say so. Both houses were built at the same time and under the East Delta Commerce Center project. That explains why you can call the Whirling from the intercom. Albeit, I doubt that anyone responds. Yeah. If the Whirling is part of the same building, then it's part of the Doom commercial area. The darkness of this place is there, too. If you say so, Inland Empire. Uh, I saw a name. East Delta Pinball on the doorbell. Right. It used to be a gaming arcade. This is an ancient failure, before my time. I'm not surprised, however. Okay. My advice? Don't base your business on a fad. Hypnotism, floreography, trick track, especially pinball. Agreed. Pinball is the worst. Kim. Kim, you were my brother, Kim. You're supposed to love the pinball, not hate it. <sighs> Pinball's fun, man. Okay. Pinball is fun, Kim. What is wrong with uh, with a bit of with a bit of pin and ball? A strange thing happened when I tried calling a company named Slipstream SCA. Someone answered. All right, I'm glad that we have a thing about this. It can't be true. They don't work here anymore. They've been gone for years. That's what I thought. Are you sure it was Slipstream SCA? Was it a woman? Maybe it was Playsons from the bookstore. Yeah. She said she was from Tricentennial Electrics. Tricentennial Electrics? There's a moment before she recognizes the name. It used to be a major electric company 100 years Ooh. ago. Are you sure it wasn't just some kids playing a prank on you? That, that, one, that one there is really cool. Sorry, I'm trying to make the the curl go the right way, like fucking the portrait of this of this fine fellow, and it, I, it's mirrored. I keep making it go the wrong way. I, I've got it good now. Don't worry. One hundred years ago. Okay, so in the fifty-one of yester century, uh, I don't think that they would have had the ability to pre-record and leave messages. So that's strange. No, it was something else. It was eerie. It's a malignant entity. It was too real to be just a prank. Either we're dealing with a professional actress, or... No, it was something else. Something... eerie. Pranks can be eerie. She looks as if she's still convinced it's nothing to be worried about. Ah, oh, the kids these days. We were just one of them, and now they're terrorizing us. No solidarity. Kids hate adults, adult hates kids, it's a constant cycle. I have a few more buildings, a uh, few more questions, a few more buildings about the question. Sure, I'm listening. Do I have more questions about the intercom? No, I don't, but it's there. I'm pretty sure it still doesn't work. Okay. Sh sure, I'm listening. I did have other questions. Good. I hope it clarified things a bit. Damn, all, what the, else? all those questions, no increases to this one. Um... Damn, it's a white check. We may retry it. Are you ready? This is a legendary. This is a. This is a legendary check. Eight percent. All right. A gust of wind mm. through the chimney. The stones and minerals on the shelves rattle as though agitated. <laughs> For a moment, it almost feels as though you're outside the building my to the atmosphere bro my favorite thing about this game is that it does give you the percentage beforehand holy shit <laughs> do you see what i mean i told you this game is like 72 percent chance no eight percent chance have a cookie what was the roll we rolled exactly okay we rolled 14 we succeeded that's some good shit. How about that? Shivers. A gust of cold air sweeps through the chimney. Wow. You got an 8%. Yeah. Yeah. 
Nice, dude. All right, legendary. We're feeling good today. That's what happens when you pick Google's I'm feeling lucky, and it gives you the result that you wanted straight away. For a moment, it almost feels as though you're outside the building, exposed to the atmosphere. This is still just a theory, but hear me out. I think I know why your business hasn't failed. Didn't we already talk about this? She asks, as the wind continues to seep in through the cracks in the old chimney. It's because you're not in the same building as the others. This isn't technically the doomed commercial area. What are you talking about? My address is exactly the same. Rue de Sanguelan 10. No, the old coal plant that used to be here was subsumed into the new venture. Its ruins swallowed up, yet it has a different address in the heart of the city. No, this used to be a coal plant. Touch the safety curtains. Stroke the fairy wall. You're in a chimney of another building. This doesn't make any sense. She looks around the makeshift nest that she has carved out for herself, bewildered. Are you saying my business was spared because of a technicality? Where is this coming from? Let's just say I have my own methods. Unusual methods. And what? Does it mean that I'm safe from failure? Don't let her become complacent. She still needs to ward her soul against the evil forces. Actually, it's only your workshop that's protected. You should still do something to defend your person. She starts laughing, her fingers trying to rub away the exhaustion from her face. What? Do you know what this is? She raises her hand to reveal a piece of metal shining on her index finger. A lucky charm? A Semenes ward? It's a mourning ring. I made this when my first company failed. It was a small jewelry shop right here in the East Delta Commerce Center, built with the little I inherited from my parents. I drove it into the ground within a year. I didn't have what you would call a viable business plan. Wow. See? The curse is real. I bet you didn't run this little jewelry shop from the protective depths of your chimney. No, you're right. I didn't. <laughs> she laughs again, but it sounds rather small and sad. It wasn't just the jewelry shop either. I always thought that it was just the world that you were supposed to try again and again until you finally succeed. And now you're telling me what? That it was all because I didn't run my little shops and ventures from a dump inside an abandoned chimney? I like all of these options. Don't call it a dump, you've made it nice and cozy here. Yeah. Or maybe it's the entire world that's cursed. It's such a precarious place. Nothing ever works out the way you want it. It's because life isn't fair. That's why people like role-playing games. You can be whoever you want to be, you can try again. Still, there is something inherently violent even about dice rolls. <laughs> yeah. Role-playing games are just so good though, right? They're great. I have so many on my list and it's so exciting. It's like every time you cast a die, something disappears. Some alternative ending or an entirely different world. Dude. She picks up a pair of dice from the table and examines them under the light. I think about this very often, and it I think about it when I reflect on my own life. You ever you we've all had the 2 a.m., 3 a.m. stare at the ceiling trying to get to sleep into the void, reflecting on your own life. And what I think about a lot is fork in the road scenarios and how the smallest of moments the smallest of choices have such a crazy ripple effect that it's like man if i didn't just talk to this one person download this one app go to this place uh pick up this thing like it sometimes it is the smallest actions has the biggest effects on your life that it's like man if i didn't do this one tiny thing that is a whole alternate timeline that's a whole parallel universe out there where i didn't do or i did do this thing 
and I'm in a completely different place because of it. And it's not even an exaggeration. There's been plenty of moments in my own life that are the tiniest, tiniest things that had huge outcomes, you know? And it's, it's crazy. I always think about that. I always think about fork in the road situations. Almost every single thing that you do is a fork in the road situation. We have no control over it. And we are, as humans, we are stuck in a, we are very curious people. We're a very curious species. We will spend our entire existence chasing answers and we will die not getting them. Uh, our in, uh, And we give our progress to the next generation. That's why history exists. That's why we're chasing questions about uh, the universe, the ocean, earth, the meaning of life uh and we have no fucking clue but we keep theorizing we keep asking um you know and this is a tangent isn't it that's an existential tangent um yeah fork in the road moments big stuff i thought i'll stop myself there before we, we before we go on a rant that gets too deep but i think about i think about that kind of stuff a lot where uh, we as we as humans, we always are like, what if I did this? What if I did this? What if I didn't do this? What if I wasn't an idiot here? What if I didn't embarrass myself then? What if I asked her out? What if I didn't ask her out? Uh, what if I did this? Signed up for this? Maybe did this? It's We're in a constant state of regret for our previous actions, but not really ever grateful for the actions that brought us to where we are in the first place. Uh, and I, I've i changed my thinking about that recently as well. I used to always regret, for example, with YouTube, I used to always regret that I didn't start it earlier. I was always like, I've been wanting to do this for a decade and I started now and that's 10 years that I could have done it. And then I think back on that and I've actually had to change my thinking on that recently. And I've gone, you know what? That's a, that's a huge decision. It's a completely different thing. I probably wouldn't have even got been successful. I probably wouldn't have even gotten off the ground. I was a completely different person and I've done an insane amount of growth just in the past couple of years, let alone the past decade. Like, I am not the person I was when I was, you know, 17, 18 years old. I was a dumb idiot. <laughs> My brain was not fully formed. I would have made completely different content and ended up in a completely different state of mind and completely different place in my life and probably gave up and stopped doing it. I think I start and in hindsight, I think I started doing it at the perfect time. And everything worked out for me. I'm here playing Disco Elysium and sharing it with you guys. Would I have done that if I started YouTube 10 years ago? Maybe not. Maybe not. So a lot of people regret the fork in the road and regret making the choice that they made and not the choice that they could have made because there's always that sexy mystery in the other decision in what we don't know the unknown and i think it's good to actually look and analyze the decisions you have made that led you to the point that you are and be grateful for the for what you do have and the, you know your reason for being and where you currently are at and what you did in your life to bring you here so uh, rant over. Let's get back to the let's get back to the game. But every time you cast a die, something disappears, and it's a tr it's a real life thing. Is real life has dice rolls. Real life is a video game in a sense because video game mirrors reality. You know, I tend to live my life like a video game when I leave the house. Sometimes it's fun to do that. It's fun to do that. But anyway, thanks for sharing your theories, officer. Bro, the fact that we get a thought after that just just makes me so happy. Uh, the precarious world, man. Oh, I'm going to shed a tear. This game really st strikes a chord, man. This game strikes a chord. It's This is like the, one of the most satisfying games I have ever played. And while I am so excited, while I am so very excited for so many other RPGs and games that I'm going to play with amazing, amazing stories, I cannot believe how fucking good this game is. I cannot believe it that it is almost going to ruin future games because I'll be like, oh, it doesn't have Disco Elysium's writing. <laughs> 
Oh, this game kills me. This is crazy. Temporary research bonus for the precarious world is every single red check fails. Um, every single red check fails. Give me one moment. I wasn't joking about that tier, apparently. Um, the precarious world. This game is ridiculous, man. This game is ridiculous. All right. All red checks fail, so that's terrible. Well, not terrible, but it is like it is worrisome. So uh, all red checks fail for four hours. I think we mostly come up across um, white checks, but it means that I think we have to we would have to chill for a bit. I might. I really am curious about this one, considering what has prompted the thought. Uh, but we'll see. Seems like the point of this game is victory. The absence of defeat on all fronts. Victory in business ventures and creative undertakings. Victory in love and over other people. Political victory, ideological victory, hell, even sexual victory. Definitely a lot of object-based victories too. Having things and not losing them. One problem though, not a lot of victors in sight. Everyone's mostly losing. Why is that? And how do you not lose? I would really like to internalize that thought. That is fascinating. So we'll see how we go. I can get a skill point to unlock a thing and think about it. However, I think we're about to do some important stuff. And if we're going to fail all red checks, that is that is concerning. That is concerning. So we'll, we'll see. We will, we, will, we will get to that thought. I have more questions about this building. I'm listening. No, I do not. Good. Okay. Clarify things a bit. This is this one encounter, this one conversation with a novelty dice maker, which seems to have no connection, seems to have no connection to our main mystery. For it to get this much of a response out of me is testament to just how fucking good this game is. I cannot believe it. I, I cannot believe this shit, dude. Like, holy shit. She puts on she puts on her headphones and she goes back to work and we will check in we will check in with her in eight hours. Uh that was at three fifteen, so it's been one hour. So in seven hours at eleven PM we're picking up some dice. My god. That was just that was just one conversation. The fact this happened with Joyce as well that it's just like the fact that you can have one conversation and it completely shifts and affects you in such a large way is is crazy to me. And also I need this dice. It would be in here, right? A thick layer of cold dust covers the furnace, coloring it pitch black. No. Oh no, well hang on. This 20-sided die is made of bloodstone and inlaid with lapis lazuli, its colors resembling police sirens. Its blue partner is missing, kinda looks like the fire department arriving on the scene. Got fucked, shit fingers. Note, look at the map. <laughs> look at the map tab in journal to see which white checks have opened. Thank you so much. I do do that, because it gives us a, a thing. Like the sleeping dock worker. Uh, is a physical instrument. Those on white are available to try now. I really like that, by the way. That it, it just is like, by the way, you can uh, you can redo this shit and uh, and see how you go. Unfortunately, the mirror, this thing is still fucked. Where I can't I can't scroll. I have to do I have to do this. This is apparently still impossible. We'll see how we go. So the the die is missing. I really thought that it would have just either been in the chimney for us to get, and it's definitely not going to roll this far. But I am very happy uh, that I have um, come back in here to check out this area and get that safety curtain pulled back. That was that was really good stuff. That was profound. Um, I'm going to take off this. I'm going to take off this flashlight now, because I do not need it. Um, and 
Let's go talk to Placence and tell her what the fuck is going on with the curse thing. With the with the curse thing. What have you found? Oh, and then I do buy the books. There may be teachings in them. I am going to be buying books, don't you worry, because we've also got to buy books. I talked to the entity you told me about. Her name is Nihan. She's a novelty dice maker. A novelty dice maker? Well, spit it out. Why does she need the dice? For some kind of sorcery? Sometimes they use the ankle bones of sheep. Actually, it's alligator jawbone. Um... Ooh, I like the I like the first two options. No, ma'am. I have felt her aura. She is not the one to blame for this curse. I don't understand. If it's not her, then where is the source of the doom? How did she explain the curse? She looks perplexed. The narrative she's built herself. It does need tearing down. Now let's tear it down, baby. Just don't say you don't have any answer yet. The uncertainty is killing her. To hell with it. Perchance you ought to just lie, sire. She says there's no curse, there are too many inconsistencies, just capitalism, bankruptcy is a quirk of our economic system, the source is in the taxidermist shop, he became involved in arts darker than taxidermy and brought the void spirits down upon this place. Honestly, I don't have an answer yet, still needs to be followed like that strange radio computer thing. There is another entity, more malignant, pulling the strings in Martinez. Perhaps my travels will cross paths with it. Wow, okay, we have choices. We have choices to wrap this up. I still need to obtain that password for the radio game. So that's another loose end that we have. I honestly think that I might be going for just number two. After all of that, I would rather just lay it down. I need this woman to understand reality for a hot second. It's just capitalism, Placence. Wait, what? The entire economic system is cursed? <laughs> um, I'm afraid that only world revolution can help you. Seems like a communism thought uh, second one being fascism the third one I think is tied to one of the other two I'm not sure actually I'm afraid that only world revolution can help you play sense another revolution she looks down at the pendant in her trembling hands she collects herself I understand what's going on here you went in there, rummaged around, and accomplished nothing. And now you're telling me these intellectual things to cover up for it. Placence, do I look like an intellectual to you? It's okay. You don't have to. I was wrong to trust another person. I will manage this psychic calamity as I always have. Alone. On my own. I am I'm sick of this shit. Thank you for nothing. Please, do buy some books, or be on your way. 70 experience though, baby! That's what we're in here for. Wow. Total psychic collapse between you two right now. Hell yeah. I am sorry we had to disappoint you, ma'am. Can we go now? What if I want to buy a book? Goodness, you were already doing good browsing the shelves. Why do you stop? Don't you feel compelled? Go! Go! Get back there. The books await you. Okay. Uh, what type of books do you have? Everything is on the shelves. Take a look yourself. The shelves compel you, don't they? Uh, not really. She smiles and nods, seemingly relieved. Okay. Alrighty then. Capitalism. We could have just lied, but honestly, I don't fuck with that right now. I am going to buy some books. Shelves full of biographies of... Famous people. Greatest Innocence book is what we're getting. Bam! True cultural touchstone. Enjoy the read. Enjoy the read. And then I want the... the... Do I want the one with the devil woman or the one about medical information? Do I want to satisfy my deepest, darkest desires? To read about the pale? 
or the Devil Woman. This bookstore is not strictly about crime, romance, and biographies of famous people. Guess what? There's also a wide range of paranormal literature. I'm pretty sure we can afford all of them and sleep tonight. I want to buy medicinal purposes of the pale for 420 real. Indeed. Something about that book does seem to have spoken to you. I mean, that's right, because I did the whole check thing to make that book stand out. Well, I hope it contains what you're looking for. I hope so too, because I paid for it. Um, I'm pretty sure you can't buy a Dick Mullen book, Shoes, right? Yeah. The there's no Dick Mullen book to buy. It's just the three books, I think. I think. And then there's also the maps. Devil Woman book, please. Is brimming with worn paperbacks. The Man from the Umdal and the Devil Woman. It is a bestseller for a reason. <laughs> I don't doubt it, dude. And that is why... Oh, and then there's the board game. Ooh, and then there's... And then there's the board game. Okay, there is the board game. We will buy the board game once we have dice, dude. Once we have dice, we'll buy the board game. Um, we have just enough money to afford to sleep tonight. Um, I just need to double check these maps. Several maps have the maps look old and faded. I'm sorry, officer. They're quite valuable. That old thing. It's enough from when some design studio people tried to spruce the place up four or five years ago. Oh. They also renovated the horse statue, set up those coin operated viewers and designed the new street lamps. For some reason, I thought I'd already done this. I don't think I had done this. So forgive me. I just skipped through some options. Um, OK, we can't buy maps because we already bought one map. Uh, the map of Martinez is the only one available, and apparently we can scarcely afford them. Rude. Uh, quite valuable, but Martinez one is so cheap. Uh, an out-of-date map of a tourist location that never was nor came to be. So, design studio people tried to spruce the place up, renovating the horse statue, set up the coin-operated viewers, and the new street lamps. What happened then? They didn't get that far, for some reason. A shame the project never got going. Would be nice if someone fixed Martinez up. All these ruins are bad for business. So is it the ruins that's bad for business or the curse? All right. Get me out of here. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna do some light reading. See you, pleasance. I don't think I need to come back here ever again. Actually, that's a lie. Board game. Okay. Inventory. Interact. We got books, baby. Um, all right. Oh no. We bought a book that was written by a fascist. It's the Illuminati. The dusty tome brings knowledge on the history of innocences. It is written by one Jao Paulo Salomo Lopez de Fuego, a mesque fascist who tries to reach a conclusion on which of the innocences is the coolest in the world. Interact. The Greatest Innocence by Joao Paulo Salomo Lopez de Fuego. The book is large and heavy. I don't think... I did a bad job on the pronunciation. Crack open this immense tome. Browsing through the various chapters, you try your best to understand the ceaseless overflow, the sprawl of names, dates, places, events historical. Most of it ends up as a twisted mass of facts inside your brain. Nice. Your educational survey is done. Did you catch any of that? No. Oh well, it's pop quiz time. Let's see what you've learned. This might take a few minutes. You ready? Okay, uh, I definitely know what we've learned. Sure, why not? That's the spirit. Here we go. Question one. Who was the first innocence? Oh yeah, this is what I was made for. That's so? All right, go on. Give me all the hints you've got, encyclopedia. A pop quiz is a short examination designed to test your knowledge without any prior warning or announcement. Encyclopedia, that's not what I wanted. The teacher to assess how thoroughly the students have retained the material at hand. Voila, now blast that first innocence. That's not what I asked. Thanks for nothing. <laughs> Thank you, Half-Light. Half-Light knows what I wanted. Dolores Day. Dolores. Pain threshold? Pain threshold giving me the answer and not encyclopedia, really? Dolores Day? Incorrect. Ah! Pain threshold! Humanism, internationalism, and the welfare state. She codified parliamentary democracy and created modern institutions. 
Among these, the moral intern. Ah. She was powerful and beautiful on all her icons. Innocence of humanism, internationalism, and the welfare state. Okay. Her colors are silver, white, and apricot. And when you think her name, Dolores, stomach acid rises to the back of your throat, <laughs> and it hurts. You see a flesh silver, a wreath, an airport bag, and blonde hair. You don't know why. Another choice, perhaps? I don't know, man. As soon as it, we get any flashes that are visuals related to something that could be like an airport bag and blonde hair, I'm like, that's our, that's our ex leaving us. Stay clear of this one. There's something terrible about this one. What? A strange sensation of loss. When she left the earth, the dust and the ice and the humans. That is unimportant to the quiz. Stop thinking about this. Inland Empire really said, steer clear about this one, and I ignored it, and I got damaged morale because of it. I really should listen to my own brain sometimes, but then I just go, you know what? Curiosity killed the Harry. Yes, the quiz is impersonal. No need to rouse sensations in yourself at the mention of Dolores Day. Who was the first innocence? It wasn't Dolores Day. Okay, well, we obviously, we had a 33.33333% chance of getting it correct, and now it's a 50% chance of getting it correct. So I'm going to say... Solar? Incorrect. Ah! Solar was anointed during the previous century and even lived to see the current one. She was an urban planner who spoke her mind and largely left history to its own devices, encouraging people to excel on their own rather than prescribing to a deified model of history. Mm. She is often called an anti-innocence. Anti-innocence. Sola resigned after an assassination attempt by a Yugo nationalist who blamed her for not taking the side of the left during the turn of the century revolutions. Innocences don't usually resign. Care to try again? The, uh, the Paraganashian? Correct. Thank you. Nothing much. I knew it was that one. Him. It's not even clear that he was a he, but Franco Negro presumed as such and called him Pius. He's depicted as a young man with molten gold pouring out of his mouth. All he spoke was gold. It's said he invented God and equality of men before God. He also introduced the gold standard as a way for measuring people's love for Aurum. Okay. As the first innocence, he declared that there should be more of those like him. It is presumed his disciples were the beginning of the Holy Party, the Founding Party. <laughs> Question two, who was the strongest innocence? Easy, everybody knows the answer to this. You, me, anybody. Okay, so you know the answer to this? I, I trust you've got my back encyclopedia, right? And innocence is the highest category of historical personage in the world. Okay. A literal personification of history. Traditionally, an innocence, when anointed, assumes supreme rule over the Occident or the known world in general. At least the parts that matter. Yes, yes. So interesting. But I thought you'd give me the answer to the question. Hmm. I can do better. Okay. So commonly, an innocence does not enforce his or her power through military power. This is seen as unnecessary. The innocence wins because an innocence can't help but win, for their deeds are inevitabilities. Did this help? No. Damn. Yeah. Great, Dolores. <sighs> you really gonna make me say Dolores again, pain threshold? But now I want to pick Dolores. Uh, and da, 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 da. This is why we have a feed, dude. This is great. Dolores was the innocence of you. Okay, she's uh, she caught it for actually. You know what? I mean, modern institutions, like in terms of it not being physical strength, because an innocence is the highest category, the literal personification of history. When anointed, assumes supreme role. You know what? It might actually be Dolores. Incorrect again. Fuck. While she originated many modern institutions, launched several successful expeditions, and was even critical of the innocentic system itself. Okay. And somehow 
keeps popping up in your mind. She's not often considered the strongest. Okay. Even though the words most associated with her rule are l'amour, la compassion, la auto discipline, love, compassion, self control, which could be seen as facets of strength. Would you like to try again? I would like to try again. Please, relax. Now, what was the information about Franco? It was... Molten gold pouring out of his mouth. All he spoke was gold. The gold standard. The founding party. It might be him. Correct. Yep. Named the innocence of militarism. He codified hereditary rule, but at the same time ended serfdom and established the inter isolari real as the global reserve currency. He also established the concept of the nation. Global currency. Franco Negro attempted to solve the rising tensions between the aristocracy and bourgeoisie by building a unified society in which every man has a place and a mission, but at the same time may rise to nobility provided on the strength of his virtue. I think kind of the positive outcome of getting all the answers incorrect before you get a correct one is you get the information about the incorrect answer, which is good to go back to. Question three, who was the false innocence? Oh, now it actually is Dolores. Hang on. Wait, 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 no, hang on. Anti-innocence. No, so solo, right? False innocence and anti-innocence, could they be the same? Got it under control. Oh. No problem. Nope. Okay. D Solid on this one. Different answers. It's widespread historical information. Okay. Are you going to be helpful this time? I could use a hint. Yes. There exists a group called the Founding Party, known as the Holy Party, during the time of the Periconarsian. This, the world's oldest international organization, spends its time in search of either the re-emergence of the innocents or new members. I'm going to sigh heavily out loud. <sighs> there seems to be a mix-up with the sources. It's not my fault. Okay. At least it clearly wasn't Dolores Day. She wouldn't be false. She's beautiful. Dolores. No, stop thinking it. I said it wasn't her. She was true. Okay. Um, I'm going to pick option six, take a bathroom break, and then answer the question. All right. Business concluded. And you know what is a very handy thing about being in a situation like this where you put on the outfit that really you know speaks to you when you want to be an art cop but you don't have to worry about the bottom you know you don't have to worry about down below business up top nothing below it just it just makes the bathroom trips a lot a lot easier you know so no Stop thinking it. I said it wasn't her. She was true. I, I didn't mean to pick that option again, but that's fine. Um, we have three options once again. So, um, Erno, Pasternak, Kedra, and Stepan the Despicable. So, we want to know the false innocence. Do you reckon someone who's despicable would be the false innocence? Incorrect. No. Stepan the Despicable. Regent of Kedra was a ruler who conquered the known world during the Kedriatic conquest instead of the despotic Erno Pasternak. Would you try again? Uh, Erno Pasternak? Correct. There have been a number of counter or false innocences, some assumed to have innocent qualities, some who just thought so themselves. Occasionally, they have the support of a faction inside the ecclesiastic organization and accusations of foul play have arisen. Nice. 
The most famous and important of these was Elena Pasternak. He was into torture, despotism, hymns, cannons, and world conquest, but got defeated and humiliated by Stepan the Despicable of Kedra. Damn. Final stretch. You've come so far and learned so much. This is the most important one. Question four. Who was the greatest innocence? The most important of them all. The most precious to humankind. Hmm. I've got it. Honest. Okay, are you sure this time? I'll bite. Hint me. Of course, this is my thing. The reason I exist in this world. The correct answer is Franco Negro. You're absolutely certain of this? Zero doubts. Dolores Day. Correct. The Mesk might see Franco Negro as the father of nations, but as of this century, there's been a great shift in attitude. Dolores Day has become widely regarded as the greatest innocence. A most radical change to the whole fabric of the world. My encyclopedia, dude, doesn't even know what's going on with this book. Everything from inter travel to the connected world to three consecutive scientific revolutions can be traced back to her. Every decade that passes, she seems less human somehow and more beautiful. It was it was it was baited for us to do the whole time. It gives us Dolores every single time and she's the final answer. <laughs> Congratulations on finishing the test. The results and your subsequent grade have been calculated. You get a D. Not particularly remarkable, but technically a passing grade. Not that anyone really expected better. A D for damn impressive. You would have done better if you just left Dolores Day for the end. Dial the Dolores Day down a bit. Yeah, D for Dolores Day. Damn you, you arrogant book. What's going on with you? <laughs> the lieutenant is jolted awake. A jolted awake by your furious cursing. Thinks it's so smart, goddamn. Okay. The lieutenant stares at you, his visage unflinching. You are shouting at an inanimate object, like a real weirdo. No wonder you seem to have trouble with the right answers. Okay. Man, something's weird about this book. You should do something fun instead. Rock out. Forget about it. Okay, horrific necktie. Let's put the book away. Okay. So that was The Greatest Innocence. Now we have book Medicinal Purposes of the Pale. A small green book giving off a peculiar foreboding impression, although it's hard to figure out why. It describes the various ways of healing debilitating ailments through the use of pale, some of which sound implausible at best. Okay, interact. Medicinal Purposes of the Pale. The cover of this heavy tome features a number of esoteric symbols. I really like that just reading the book is like a full thing. It's it's awesome. Open the book. Flipping through the book, you find a number of sections on the general benefits of the pale. A large pharmacopoeia makes up nearly half of the book. What's a pharmacopoeia? You come across the following explanation. While modern pharmacopoeia are continually updated by so-called experts based on the results of clinical trials, readers will find assembled here the timeless wisdom relied upon by generations of traditional Seolite medicine practitioners, Mesk mystics, and Ilmaran folk doctors. Nice. It's all quackery, in other words. Great. Finally, something to calm the angry spirits that have been plaguing you. It's that book's fault. It seems to contain descriptions of the medicinal properties of various ingredients that may be gathered from the pale, as well as instructions for producing a variety of herbal remedies. Is there anything in there about restoring lost memories? There are a number of Seolite tonics that promise to improve your short-term memory, but nothing that speaks to your condition. Anything about curing an apocalyptic hangover? There's nothing in here that speaks to hangovers directly. However, while browsing through the various descriptions, you become convinced 
that you could assemble something from the ingredients listed here. Want to give it a shot? All right, book. Let's see what you've got. First, you need to choose a base ingredient. Ginger root. Next, you'll need to combine the base ingredient with an appropriate vehicle. Cure my hangover with more alcohol. Um, birch bark tea. Lastly, is there anything else you'd like to add? Spoonful of sugar. The ginger root will help with the nausea, and the birch bark tea will help you flush out the toxins. The sugar just makes it taste better. Yeah. I knew that ginger root would be good, and I knew that tea would help with the stomach. Um, and then with the sugar, I was like, hey, let's sweeten it a little. The very thought of this tea causes your muscles to relax and your mind to clear. You're more present and in control than you were a moment ago. Yo, actually nice. Uh, let's savor the feeling a moment longer. Mmm. A tingle rushes down your spine, and you feel your toes uncurl. If only it could always be like this. The amount of just healed morale just then? God damn. We can concoct one of those hangover cures again, apparently. I wonder what would happen if we picked some bad ingredients. Nice, I nailed that. I want to open the book, because there was another option that Flipping I didn't through pick. The book, you come across, it's all, finally, it seems uh, this to be descriptions of the medicinal... I just want something that will soothe the relentless torment of my existence. What you're describing is booze. <sighs> you don't need any herbs for that. Okay, enough of this. The tome seems to get heavier with every passing minute. Okay. Um, actually, let's pick this option and see what happens. I want to try concoct one of those hangover cures again. Very well. First, choose a base ingredient. I feel like if we do this wrong, we might end up um, damaging our morale. Mint. Next, you'll need to combine the base ingredient with an appropriate vehicle. <laughs> that one's gonna that one's gonna just be a mistake, right? Mint with some whiskey, dram of whiskey. Lastly, and is then there anything else you'd like to add? Some ginseng root. You've created a delicious tincture of whiskey and ginger. According to the pharmacopoeia, it should increase your energy and focus, though, in your experience, it's only done the opposite. Damaged morale? Would you like to try again? Oh, okay, that's fine. It doesn't damage our morale, okay. That's a bunch of hooey. Close the book. You close the book and find yourself staring at the familiar cover once more. Nice, that's a good morale increase right there. Okay. Final book, uh, the best one for last, is The Man from Heimdall and The Devil Woman. Uh, the frontispiece of this old paperback features a muscle man in chains, kneeling before a salacious looking woman on a regal seat. A bonfire lies between the throne and the man, casting shadows on the wall, and the shadow of the vixen's headdress looks like a pair of demonic horns. I can't wait to read it. Let's go. The edges of the pages are worn and smudged. A lot of people have read about the devil woman's altercations with the uh, A lot of people have read it. Okay. Look at the back cover. The jacket copy proclaims, Man from Hyomda returns in his most exciting adventure yet. After crashing into a strange jungle, cannibalistic natives abduct his only surviving comrade, Noble Tiribold. Before Man from Hyamdal can mount a rescue. Oh no. The the crashing, the crash landing thing into a strange jungle. This is just that future armor episode, guys. Watching that at future armor episode as a child and witnessing Snoo Snoo, it that does something to a brain. He is ambushed by a tribe of female warriors and taken to the ancient citadel of Cloud <laughs> City, where a mysterious and wicked queen rules supreme. Him. Will man from Yeomdal be able to escape his dire situation and find his missing friend? It's, it's time for Snoo Snoo. Let's flip through the book. You open the book to a random page. Man from Yeomdal, wielding his two Zweihanders, is carving through a sea of savages. His visage fixed 
in grim determination. Choose why hand is oh man, Helmdal is a Dark Souls character. I got to do a Dark Souls playthrough and dedicate it to Helmdal wielding two why handers. Can we do that? I think we can. His arms whirling like windmills are soaked with the blood of his enemies. Mangled corpses litter the battlefield. Okay. You flip to the copyright page. This book was written in 38. Vogue yeah. Uh Okay. Gritty and heroic. Let's go. Berserker rage burns in his azure-hued eyes as he brings glory and honor to his long-lost Yemdala tribe from the village of Yemdal. The ivory giant roars like an ice bear, and the winds of Gatla howl out his name. Nice, dude. Give me more. Man from Yemdal rides on a gilded griffin, his golden mane billowing in the breeze. Both Zweihanders sheathed on his back. He is off to war. Will he conquer his enemies? Will he conquer himself? Onward! The steel muscles of man from Yeomdal gleam in the humid jungle air. Yet the man does not sweat. In meditation, his soul drifts in the frigid Northlands he calls home. Holy shit, this is so me! Really get into the book. A passage reads... The man from Hyeondal looks up, his eyes blue as the mountain lakes of his homeland. He rarely speaks, but now his voice booms in the darkened throne room. <laughs> Do not try to sap my masculine essence, wicked temptress. Son of Hyeondal will never succumb to your seductive wiles. Do not try to sap my masculine essence, wicked temptress. I gotta use that. Thine spells are no match for purity and strength of will. Brothers of Hyeomdal stand above the vices of flesh, for it is weak and corruptible, yet mine is forged in gore and strife. Queen Lidiana just laughs, a sultry and salacious sound, then says, I have grand plans for you, man from Hyeomdal. She gestures her diabolical hand toward an array of potions and unguents. First, you shall please me. Then, lead my armies against the vicious cannibals. Not a muscle moves in the face of the man from Yeomdal. Yet inside, there is turmoil. This goes against all he holds sacrosanct. Wow. This is epic. Epic book moment. Epic Hyeomdal. In the final pages, man from Hyeomdal mounts Galavarin, his mighty griffin, and turns his gaze to the horizon. Queen Lydiana is dead, but an army of cannibals is storming the gates, and still there's no word of trusty Tyrabald. I cannot believe it. I've been book-baited. I've been book-baited. Hyeomdal didn't even get laid. That man ain't no simp. To find out what happens next, you'll have to pick up Man from Yeomdal and the Three-Eyed Skull, available in fine bookstores everywhere, Spring 39. Yeomdal is a stronger man than me. I would have led that fucking army. <laughs> oh, man. We've read three books in a row, which, by the way, reading books is the way to pass the time in the game, and we just read three of them back to back so we just got very absorbed it is getting dark the lights of the bookstore are on we have sped through uh the day <laughs> we have sped through the day um which i think is great like we just we bought some books and we read them immediately which is great and you know what it is good to read a good book and to just get lost in it i used to read a lot when i was younger like very young um, and then I kind of moved away from it a bit. I ended up reading like here and there throughout school. And then I ended up just like dropping it. Um, and I haven't read for a while. I listened to audio books, um, for like my, my nerdy stuff, uh, which is, which is nice. You know, you put it on kind of like a podcast and you can focus on that, which is cool. Um, but I'm trying to get back into reading some more. I have like both fiction and nonfiction stuff that I'm trying to read. And I've got a few things on my shelf, and it's, it's nice. Um, a book uh, that I'm actually reading at the moment, and I picked this up on my way back from the bathroom, where I was uh, taking a golden stream. 
uh, I picked this up because I was going to I was going to mention it because of the books uh, that I'm actually I'm reading a book at the moment which is actually quite nice and it's 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 uh, it's funny because it's not necessarily even similar related to Disco Elysium at all, but it gets you thinking because it's a brain one. Uh, it's called Man and His Symbols, and it's essentially about um, a book uh, about psychology and, and science and stuff like that. But it's uh, it's a book that essentially uh, is by insisting that imaginative life must be taken seriously in its own right as the most distinctive characteristic of human beings. Um, which is very cool. Uh, so it's about like dreams and symbolism and uh, all of that kind of stuff. And I'm I'm reading that at the moment. It's actually it's it's a nice one. Uh, it, it feels nice to find time to to read both in a video game um, and in real life. I do a lot of reading in my video games for you guys. So I also read a little bit on my own. Let's put the book away because it's now 8:20 p.m. We have interacted with some books now. Oh man, you know what I was, you know what? I didn't even think about that. I didn't even think about that until, until it was too late. About thoughts. But, I have, an, I have another thought, right? So if I unlock this, and I internalize the precarious world, and then I read the book again, will it make time go that's my question the greatest innocence browsing through your educational survey is done it seems it does make time go oh yeah this is what i was made for correct as the first question easy everybody knows the answer to this you correct franco Negro. it does not it does make time go good Got it, under it does make time no go. problem correct the most final i've got it honest Correct. Everything. Congratulate an A. You really navigated some treacherous water. I got an A. All correct. Impressive. Oddly so. <laughs> got you this time. Not so smart anymore, are you? The lieutenant is doing his best to ignore your behavior. Yeah, sure. Okay. You can reread books. You can reread books. However, I am a little bit concerned about the whole rereading books thing because it will make the time go very quickly and I still need to do stuff in the actual daytime for example there was a man on this staircase and he's no longer there because time has moved that child outside of the the store will need to go to sleep soon because it's late you know so I need to be careful about the whole uh, passing time with the books getting my brain lost in the books but also I need to remember to live a little now what I want to do is before I forget um, oh no they're not here because it's too late because I got my brain lost in the books I was gonna give the shot put that we found to okay damn it that sucks I was gonna we'll have to I'll do it tomorrow I was gonna give the shot put that I found uh, to our friends and replace it it's alright they're not there, so we'll do that one tomorrow. Uh, what I do want to do in here, and I don't know why I've gone through the back door, is with the physical instrument increase, I want to see if I can lift those weights in that gym. Because that's what you want to do after you do some light reading, is you want to exercise the brain. Now let's see if I can... I can't navigate. Oh, it does. It won't, it won't actually let me navigate without the torch. That's, that's actually really bizarre. It won't actually let you navigate without the torch. How interesting. Okay, and as we push through here, and over here, and down the stairs, I want to have a look at this. The barbell waits patiently on the floor, like a dog for its master. Oh, my head hurts. Okay, so 9%. I mean, 9%? 17%. Okay, that's a no. That's a no. I'll come back here when my physical instrument is better. I can investigate the door again. The other side. The store on the other side is closed for the night. Come back for tomorrow. Oh, I didn't even realize that. Yeah, no shit. Store's closed. I love that the store closed while the kid was still uh, outside because we'd just been stood out there reading. So that's, that's actually quite funny. We cannot break into the bookstore uh, from that door. So, we are nothing if not polite. Which is interesting. 
All right, let's get the hell out of here. Now, most people are settling for bed because it's it's often it's after nine. Okay, it it is after nine. Uh, ooh, what time was that? Three, so eight hours, eleven. Okay, we still got two hours. The water lock is for Wednesday. Oh shit. 20 hour to pay for your room at the wedding will be locked after 9. I think that's okay, because as long as we pay it, he can unlock the room, right? Oh, here comes that lovely music. He can still unlock it, right? Otherwise, we're pulling an all-nighter. And I'll read books until the until the sun comes up. Um, man, I, I did get lost in the books. That's okay, though. That's okay. Because, um... Shit. What else can I do? <laughs> no! Um... Hmm. What can I do at night? I could probably look at redoing some... Maybe I could redo some checks. The policeman cloak is a savoir faire. It is challenging. I could use a skill point to level it up and see if I can finally get my cloak and get over the other side. I genuinely think I should. Knickknack stand? Where's the knickknack stand? That's medium. The cafeteria window. The mirror is now challenging. Okay, hold on a minute. Where is Knickknack Stand? That's only a medium. Oh, hang on. Knickknack Stand is the stealing the raincoat, isn't it? I believe that's stealing the raincoat in the Fritz store, and it's... Oh, it is open. It is open. 24 hours, baby. 7-Eleven. Yep, and she's still working. What do they pay this girl? You see several packaged raincoats fill a low shelf beneath a display of croissants and juice bottles. The raincoats are transparent. 42%. Wait a minute. 42%. It says that it's a medium. But on here it's challenging. Interesting. I don't know. <laughs> Whatever that fucking means. That's fine. You know what? Maybe I should just read some books. <laughs> Maybe I should just keep reading some books. All right. Well, oh, you know what I just realized? It's after 9 p.m. and I realized what we can do. Yes, we can go and have a chat to that smoker in his apartment. That is exactly what we can do. Hell yes. That's the, that's the good shit. That is indeed the good shit. All right. Let's do that. Because it is after nine. And then we'll get the, um... We'll get the coat. After that. So the smoker on the balcony. Visit apartment 28 sometime after nine. To see if someone's home. That actually... That actually worked out quite well. See, that was my plan all along, everybody. Is get lost in the books until I can check that apartment after nine. That is exactly... Exactly how I felt that this was going to go. So... Couldn't have timed that better if I tried. Now, let's head in there. Apartment 28. Now, we went the long way. Don't ask me why. We just did. Okay, so balcony out this way. There he is! Actually, I haven't saved in a while, so I'm gonna do that. Hello. John Dummery, you found me. The young man on the balcony gives you a bright smile before taking another drag from his cigarette. His slender figure is backlit by city lights, its distant streets and motorways flashing like diamonds. We found a key hidden under a stone. Was it yours? It was mine. My friends use it from time to time to visit me. Here's he looks at you, something sparkles in his eyes. So tell me, 
Are you here to make things right again? Uh, like about the key or about everything in general, okay? I'm not going to make things right. I'm going to make them spectacular. Beautiful. He says again. A nearby street lamp casts shadows on his chin, drawing out the slender cheekbones. I have some good news for you. My Sunday friend is visiting me tonight. I told him about you and he'd like to say hello. Step in. He's already waiting. Ooh. What? Okay. Sunday friend is visiting tonight. By the way, I'm really digging the view here. Point to the city skyline. Mm Mm-hmm. That's why I chose this place. Martinez is special, isn't it? Wait. Suddenly you are digging things? The lieutenant whispers to you, shaking his head. Why would I want to meet your friend? Trust me. You do. Okay. Is this about to get weird? Very well, I'll talk to him, but first I want to talk to you. I have so many questions. That's nice, but I don't have anything to tell you. It's my friend you're looking for, not me. Okay. He takes another drag off his unfiltered cigarette and looks around. It's getting dark, and the neighboring windows have lit up, one by one. Okay, this is going to get interesting. Downstairs, a cat crosses the yard, disappearing into the bush. Love that. Besides, I've got to run. He's going to leave you alone again. That's sad. Run where? To the city. It's a beautiful night. Only if you promise that we'll talk again. It's important. Something flutters in the corner of the lieutenant's mouth as you're saying those words. <laughs> we'll talk. Just not tonight. God damn it, smoker on the balcony. Take care, alright? Level up. New skill point. Interview the Sunday friend. He's slipping off into the night. Well. And he's gone again. Looks like it's becoming a theme for him. I really hope that there's not going to be a red check in this scenario, because boy, oh boy, am I not able to do those right now. Um, He's always leaving. Why is he always leaving, Kim? Who knows, detective? It's a mystery. (laughs) Is it a sexy mystery? There's something so different about him that I just can't put my finger on. Different, of course. His shirt. Why is his shirt always unbuttoned? His shirt. The lieutenant squints his eyes, trying to hold back laughter. His shirt. His shirt. Hmm. He's trying to dive deep into the mysteries of his shirt. His shirt? No, I don't know why his shirt is always unbuttoned. His mouth tightens as though trying to hold something back. Come on, detective, let's go. We've got a potential witness to interview. His Sunday friend, remember? He nods at the apartment door before you. Yes. Okay. Never mind. In we go. For a second I thought that was God. Alright, investigate. This is going to be interesting. A quarterly business magazine. An empty ashtray. Governmental issues take me all over River Shoal, as you can see. Dishes soaked up in a pot. Flyers for underground parties. Dates for open lectures at a local university. Someone is always watching. An exquisite canopy bed made of metal. Ah, secret under the bed. Gotcha. An old photo of the same apartment dated year 01. None of this is weird. Expensive men's perfume lingers in the air. Party Dragon Silk Robe, plus one drama and plus one electrochemistry. Yo, what does that replace? Conceptualization. Not my conceptualization. This sleazy, silky bathing robe in vibrant blues features a roaring dragon on its front, ready to take off into the night. A red belt has been provided for fastening. It's culturally insensitive, but only for people who are not from Seol. The real Seolites probably don't care. Oh, baby, I'm fucking hot. I'm hot shit. Alright. 
Damn. All right, I don't need physical instrument anymore. What I need, I can put my conceptualization back. That's fine. However, I do lose, oh, I can be even more dramatic. I do lose suggestion. Let's get be even more dramatic. Oh my God, I'm a hunk. Oh my god, we don't even have, we lose authority, but we gain logic with the glasses. Oh my god, let's go. We're not, look, we're not going for the authority here, baby. We're not going for the authority. That's not what we're about. We're after electrochemistry. Even more electrochemistry. Even, even more electrochemistry. Oh, actually, these are both electrochemistry, no matter what we do. Minus one reaction speed. Minus one Savoir Fair. Yeah. Plus three on electrochemistry right now, dude. Plus two on drama. Minus one rhetoric. Fuck yeah. We are a fucking hot mess, dude. I'm all about it. Kim, man. You need to get on this shit. You need to get on my fashion game right now. Buckets of paint. What a layer of old newspapers. Alright. We'll check that after. You have acquired the robe. Keep it, officer. It looks good on you. Oh, he actually acknowledges that as well. That is, that's great. Sunday friend, you've acquired the robe. <sighs> Me with my fishnet uh, vest. Okay. My name is Charles Vildroin, and I'm an official with the coalition government. I work for the Institute of Price Stability on assignment from Sur la Clé. Sur la Clé. Those are a lot of big words, chief. I heard you talking to my friend outside. Very good. Super. I am here to assist you in any way possible. Ask me about the hanging. Super. Hanging? What's a drag? He seems like a cultured gentleman. You should ask him about the finer things. Before we go on, I absolutely have to inquire about this wonderful canopy. Oh, yes. My friend has a great eye for these things. He refuses to tell me where it came from. It's a mystery. <laughs> I believe they call this type of frame industrial. It's very comfy. Okay. That's really all I can tell you about it. He forms a little rooftop with his fingers. Cold air sweeps in from the balcony. The lieutenant takes out his notebook and nods to you to proceed. You actually witnessed the lynching? I'm sorry to say I did, officer. This is just the break we've been looking for. Easy, detective. No need to jump to conclusions. He eyes the spectacled man near the window who smiles and spreads his hand. Is it because you did it, Mr. Vildruin? Because I did it? <laughs> <laughs> My apologies, I misspoke. I mean, what did you see? Officer, it's very difficult to describe what I saw that night. It was so surreal to me, like in a play. He holds out his hands and blossoms his fingers, like a drama teacher set in the scene. Perfect. What do you mean, like in a play? It was just so strange. I could barely comprehend what was happening. I was on the balcony when it happened, getting some fresh air. I remember that first they came in, carrying what looked like a body. And then I saw all the surrounding windows go dead, one by one. Hmm. That's when I understood. I should not be seeing this. Sounds like the victim was unconscious, or at least incapacitated. Interesting. Mm. Who were they? Can you describe them? I couldn't see their faces well, and there were quite a few of them. But they were very loud and very... Martinez. He pauses, looking for the right wording. Let's just say that the laboring classes can get rather expressive with their profanities. Interesting. So was it the was it the Union Box Boys? The um Oh, what was the name? What was the their nickname? So I oh, I've forgotten the nickname of the group. How many of them were there? I couldn't tell you exactly. Less than ten. Maybe eight? Okay. What happened next? I went back inside. Okay. Were you able to see anything from inside? Officer, the yard was pitch black. There was nothing to see, but I could still hear their voices. They were threatening to kill that poor man. Uh, were they men? Women? All men, I presume. But again, I couldn't see very clearly. Uh, what ethnicity were they? I believe they were mostly white, 
though I believe I saw two Iropajites among them. And I am quite certain that one spoke with a mask accent. And what happened next? Well, that's the strangest part, officer. Nothing happened. It was oddly quiet for a public lynching. What do you mean nothing happened? They lynched a guy. Eventually, their shouts died down, and that was all. There were no gunshots, no celebratory shouts, no anything. Why didn't you call the RCM? You're right, of course. That is what one is supposed to do in such circumstances. I was simply in shock. I'm afraid I don't have anything else to add. About what time was all this happening, approximately? All I can say is that it was late. So let me get this straight. You didn't actually witness the hanging itself, did you? No, I didn't see the corpse until the following day. It seems this wasn't the break you were hoping for. I think we have everything we need. Thank you for talking to us, Mr. Villodroin. Of course. Anything I can do to assist the RCA. I'm sad that there was the option for me to also investigate the the robe, and I thought I'd be able to do both before proceeding, but I didn't get to, so that sucks. Uh, what's an official like you doing in Martinez? The coalition is only looking out for the price stability. Inflation is a killer, like a heart disease blocking the normal circulation of the economy. It must be controlled. The economy impacts the entire international community, which is why it requires international oversight. Okay, but what are you doing here in this apartment? Ah, uh, well, I'm renovating it. It is an interesting project. The building used to be a 12-story skyscraper before the cannons took the top four stories off. This, of course, happened when the coalition forces landed here. You could say I'm undoing some of the material damage the international community caused when we arrived here. So you're com some kind of bureaucrat? Yes. As I said before, I am a commissioner from sur la clé working for the Institute of Price Stability. This is one of the main projects of the Moral Inter. Wait, there isn't actually an Institute of Price Stability, is there? Or maybe there is. God, it's impossible to understand whether someone from the Moral Intern is joking or not. What is this international community? La Communauté Internationale is what Rivacholians colloquially call the coalition. In other words, the nations that stopped the disaster of the revolution. And what do I call the coalition? Your employer, technically speaking. The governing authority of Rivachol. The RCM is but one part of this provisional administration. What is the price stability? It is the most important thing. That doesn't tell me anything. It's the central goal of any sound monetary policy. Maintaining the price stability is essential to maintaining high levels of economic activity which is essential for maintaining high levels of employment, which is essential for maintaining the social stability. Basically, it makes sure the price of bread doesn't change. I do like bread. Precisément. Too much inflation, bread becomes too expensive. Too much deflation, it becomes too cheap for bakers to produce. That's why the Institute of Price Stability works to keep inflation just below 2%. Below 2% of what? But not too far below, no. Too below is also bad low, but close to 2%. Okay, you're not answering my questions at all. The coalition believes in the importance of informing the public about the benefits of the price stability. Transparency is one of our principles. Would you like an informational pamphlet? Uh, okay, sure. Give me, give me a leaflet. A sound monetary policy is essential for addressing uncertainty. Stability is the raison d'être of the moral inter. It's the reason why I identify as a moralist. All right, my, my Sunday friend. But, oh, I don't have my leaflets on me today. <laughs> That's too bad. You can always call our information line. Making information available is part of the moral intern's commitment to transparency. So I could, like, call on Kim's radio, maybe? I've heard about this moral intern before, but I want to know more. It's the International Organization for Moralists. Hence, Moralist International. The Institute of Price Stability is just one of its many mind babies, as is the coalition. Mind babies. Okay, turn to Kim. So what I'm hearing is that we're moral intern bitches? Doing one's job doesn't automatically make one anyone's bitch. Besides, there are more nefarious powers to work for than the moral intern. And then we can ask, are you a moralist, even though we know that he is? But of course. 
Am I a moralist? But why? Because moralists believe in a normal, stable world governed by democratic values. Lieutenant, are you a moralist? Hmm? Me? I, uh, I'm a lieutenant of the RCM, dedicated to maintaining law and order in Ravachol. Okay, so you're a moralist. A very moralist answer. Yeah. But what is a normal, stable world? The Occident is part of the normal world. Oranier, sur la clé. Martinez doesn't seem very normal or stable to me. Martinez? No. Martinez is something else. What about the rest of Revachol? Is it part of the normal world? Revachol is generally difficult. It's led by an interim government, which means it hasn't yet achieved full democracy. But they are working towards it. You're all doing very well here, relatively speaking. Gives you an improving nod. <laughs> it's like every time I'm talking to people, I'm choosing option D, none of the above. Is that moralism? <laughs> yes, it is. I don't think I'm a moralist. Moralism sounds incredibly boring. I want more action. The ide ideology of foreign occupiers, Revachol, must be governed by Revacholians. That is the fascist choice. Democracy is a meaningless sham as long as the working class is under the boot heel of capital, which is the... Um, ultra liberal, I almost said hyper liberal, ultra liberal. So it feel I think the structure of like option D being this one all the time is is this moralism? I'm pretty sure it goes communism, fascism, ultra liberal, and moralism in the same order that it is on the um, on the list. It's in the, the same order on the on the list here. So there you go. Um, yeah, I, it's kind of, yeah, it's both of these. I'm just going to do, democracy is a meaningless sham as long as the working class is under the boot heel of capital. <clears throat> of course, the detective's personal views do not represent the views of the RCM. <laughs> Which he has to keep stating on my behalf. Ah, my friend. But the lesson of the revolution is that communism does not work. Ooh, unless that option was the communism answer, which is interesting, actually. Um, we just haven't tried real communism yet. Ah, yes. The unattainable idea. Never settle for less. Good luck with that, my friend. Yep, that was a communist answer. It went up to 11. Okay. So, scratch that. The option is not always in the same place. Now, enough of this delightful political interlude. Almost as Was if... Was there anything else you wanted to ask? Almost as if that's the point. Tell me about Sur la Clé. What's there to say? Sur la Clé is a modern, urbanized country that measures very high on the human development and freedom index. Mostly, though, it's known as the executive heart of EPIS. Moreover, it is a great sponsor of less emerged countries. Revachol is only one of its many darlings whose progress it supports and cherishes. What makes Revachol's Sur la Clé's darling? Because a great percentage of Revachol's culture hails from Sur la Clé. Its language, its people, its cuisine even. Or at least in the downtown La Delta area. Jamrock and other parts of the international zone have been mercifully spared of Sur la Clé's love for meatballs and mashed potatoes. Tell me about Orange. Oranier is an exemplary nation who, as a core member of EPIS, contributes 28% of our annual budget. Next to Sur la Clé, Oranier is probably the most prominent member of the international community. Okay, but outside of EPIS, what is Oranger? Oranier's economy is one of the most advanced in the world. It has successfully transitioned from heavy industry to advanced services and generally acts as an engine for sustainable change in the international community. Can't you, can't you just talk like a normal person? About what? About Orange. Just tell me what it's like there. Oh, it's very urban and very well organized. Their streets are clean, their horse cars run on time, the people are polite and efficient. Like I said, they are an example for less emerged nations to follow. Enough business. Let's talk about something else. Whatever you wish, officer. 
Can you tell me about your friend? Ah, my friend. My friend is a good young man. His family immigrated here from Kedra, and life has not been easy for him. But he understands the importance of education. He has taken his future into his own hands, and that's all that matters. What's Kedra? Kedra is a candidate member of APIS. But, between you and me, their potential membership is a more contentious issue. Uh, what do you mean? That it's never going to happen. They enter negotiations in 21, and it's been pending ever since. So, like, 30 years. Okay. What's this EPIS thing you keep talking about? EPIS is a very special program developed by the Moral Intern to support certain Occidental nations. It began as a unified system of weights and measures, which proved to be a wild success. Nothing but kilograms and centimeters as far as the eye can see. Ah, a unified system of weights and measures. That's nice. Imagine if we had that in reality, but we don't. <laughs> There's all those other measurements that don't make any sense. So strange. This game has fantastic world building. Like, I've said that, said that already, but this game has fantastic world building down to some very specific details. God, yes. Sweet standardization, the backbone of rationality and commerce. Continue. It was such a wild success that we expanded it into an economic union for the processing of steel. Another success. And between you and me, the moral in turn feels emboldened by this success. Emboldened to take EPIS to the next level. Okay, but like, what does it stand for? Why, it stands for progress and stability, like the moral intern as a whole. No, but what does the, the letters stand for? It's been such a wild, extraordinary success thus far. We are very excited to take it to the next level. You don't even hear the words I'm saying, do you? A supranational political alliance. The United States of Occident. Is it going to be like this place here? You mean Revachol? No, it's going to have transparent democracy. Is Revachol going to be a part of EPIS? It's one day going to be a candidate member of EPIS, sure. Didn't you say that candidate members never become real members? No, no. Candidate members do become members. Why do we even have the whole system in place if they don't? It just takes time. Time and evaluation. Okay. But we were talking about my friend here, not politics. <laughs> How did you two even become friends? How did any of us become friends? Bad things happening on the insula Indian Isola? Oil platforms ablaze in the night, civil wars lasting for years. Finally, the international community is forced to step in. W what are you talking about? No one becomes friends that way. Au contraire. It's how millions of people end up where they are. Meeting the people they meet. It's how I came here. And my friend, too. You still haven't told me who he is. Sorry. Who? The man throws a quick glance at his watch. Your friend, the smoker on the balcony. We were just talking about him. But I told you, officer, he's a bright young man here to pursue his education. Education is the foundation of our future, especially the arts. It is a cornerstone of our civilization. Fine, but what's his real name? Officer, you have to understand. I can't give you his personal information. I'm sure you have your own methods and databases, right? Please don't put me in this situation. So all you can tell me about him is that he's here to study the arts. He's deeply enmeshed in the study of the fine arts, yes. Me too, baby. I'm an art cop. Which arts? He's a truly free spirit. He likes all the arts. <laughs> Perhaps graphic design, printmaking, who knows? The world is open wide for a talented youth like him. What are you doing in his apartment by yourself? I'm just enjoying the view. Enjoying the view? There's a dead body hanging in the street. <sighs> a dead body we still need to get down by the way. Yeah, but Kim, that's because you missed the shot, okay? Listen. He says, raising his hand. A baby is crying in the neighboring apartment. Someone's baby is crying. No, listen. He says again, looking outside. The Insulindian Bay. What about it? This place used to be a luxury accommodation before the revolution. Apartments, of course, were much bigger then. A few walls have been added here and there, leaving some of the tenants without a private bathroom or a kitchen. But the million real view stays. 
You can't take that away. <laughs> he knocks on the balcony door, his face mirrored in the darkened glass. I was asking about your friend. My friend comes and goes. I'm sure you'll see him around. He's a busy bee. Okay. I had something else in mind. I'm all ears, officer. Okay. I've got all I need. A moment, officer. Okay. It's about the robe. It looks devilishly handsome on me, I know. Do you have everything you need from me? I'm afraid we won't have the chance to speak again once you leave. Hold on. Why can't we talk later? It's against diplomatic best practices for an official in my position to be discussing murders with local militiamen. And I'm pressed for time. After you leave, I should be leaving as well. Hmm. That's not the real reason he's so apprehensive. Men in his position shouldn't be seen loitering around in underprivileged young men's apartments in the middle of the night. I'm not going anywhere. I just want to take a look around this apartment. Sure. Go ahead. It's a beautiful space. Let me know if you have any further questions. Can we do the robe? Was there anything else? No, damn. Of course. I'm sorry I couldn't be the break you were looking for. Good luck with the investigation. Alright, we will now look under the bed at what this is. Hiya. Oh, it's a hat. Samaran conical hat. Logic and suggestion. Okay, so more logic minus one suggestion. Okay, so we've got a... There's a full outfit here. Uh, this tawny cone-shaped hat looks like a beacon of Samaran wisdom. It's straws sticking up like antennas. Thank God you can't really see people's reactions when they see you strolling around in this incredibly insensitive headpiece. Uh, what's that? What's currently reaction speed and um, rhetoric? Oh my lord. Oh my lord. It's super logical for a cop to wear this, but it's insensitive bachelor party vibes. <laughs> That's also another thing that I love is each one of these, and I forgot to read these, is you get a unique one for each clothing item. To become the dragon, become an addict in a strange bathing robe. Um, pretty sure I've checked most of them. Bye bye bugs, work it, halogen watermarks, a real statement, summer plans. Cigarette stained fingertips, vivid imagination, filthy boho, probably narcomaniac. Clinically insane. <laughs> okay. Was there anything else? Of okay, course. no, that's it. Okay, we have uh, explored the apartment, and uh, and everything and everything looks good, and we look great. So we're gonna bring this episode of Disco Elysium to a close at 10 p.m. on day two. So we are at night time. We do have uh, some more things that we could do, like go and in, in this beautiful get up probably try and get our police jacket uh we'll see how we go uh but it, it is getting close to wrapping up day two our guy's yawning as well i love that so because it's getting late we did some reading we passed the time and we've got more to do tomorrow so thank you so much for joining me for this episode of disco elysium it's been an absolute joy Thank you for being in here and watching this and listening along if you've made it this far through a video which has a lot of writing and a lot of dialogue. I love you. I'll see you next time.